The first principle I want you to bring to mind when trying to understand herd immunity is the fact that in order for a virus to spread, it requires a susceptible person to get infected and for that person to spread it to other susceptible people. Now, this might seem really obvious, but just bear with me for a second. Now, the second idea is to bring to mind the notion of exponential spread. Suppose that on average, a single infected person infects two other people. Those two turn into four. That four turns into 16 and so on and on. In order for the chain of infections to progress forward in this group of people, that first principle of susceptible people getting infected and moving the infection forward needs to be true. Now let's change this dynamic up a little bit. Let us assume that some, not all, just some of the people in the group are immune to the infection. If some of these people are immune, then the chain of infection spread is interrupted, and as a result, less people overall are left infected. Even people who are not actually immune are protected in a way, not thanks to their immune system, but because people around them happen to be immune and stand in the way between them and the virus. The more people in the community that are immune to the virus, the more difficulty the virus will have spreading through the community. While susceptible people are basically like big open highways acting like unwilling communicators for the virus, people who are immune act like roadblocks. And if enough people act like roadblocks, then the virus has so much trouble making its way through the community that the contagion becomes extremely slow or completely stopped. Now note that I said enough people because not everyone has to be immune for the contagion to stop. The idea is that there's a critical percentage of the population that needs to be immune for a contagion like this to eventually die out or become extremely slow moving. That critical percentage of people is called the herd immunity threshold. So herd immunity is an idea that describes the general resistance of a community to certain infections because immune people act like roadblocks. These roadblocks slow down the spread of infection and cause the rates of newly infected people to go down. The the higher the herd immunity, the slower the spread. Herd immunity is a property of the collective as a whole, and it doesn't say anything at all about your personal immunity. It is an emergent property of the group. So what does this have to do with the current pandemic? Why is this on the news? Why are people discussing it at all? And is it really something that we can use to our advantage? The short answer, unfortunately, is no. And I think that the only reason that we're hearing about this in news at all these days is because people don't really understand the concept clearly. See, the thing is that if we let the coronavirus keep infecting everyone and we just stand around and we do nothing and let it sweep through the world, then a lot of people will get infected. A lot of people will recover. These people will then act as roadblocks, and eventually the infection will be choked out because herd immunity builds and extinguishes the spread. If we live in pre-modern times, this is exactly what would happen. In fact, this has always been the natural course of all pandemics. Herd immunity is a natural consequence of the uninterrupted spread of infection. But there are two major problems with allowing for this natural approach. The first one is that it will cost the lives of millions of people, and let me explain why that is. Herd immunity has been the work of mathematical epidemiology for decades now. It is a well-understood science. The number of people an infected person will spread the disease to is something called the r naught. This is an average number. And for the SARS-CoV-2, this number is currently estimated to be 2.5. We even have a formula for the herd immunity threshold, and it's 1 minus 1 over r naught. For this infection, if the r naught is 2.5, then the herd immunity threshold is 0.6, or 60%. So that means that 60% of the world will have to be infected for herd immunity to start protecting people who are not yet immune. That is 4.6 billion people that must be infected. And if we assume that the mortality rate of COVID-19 is 1%, then we're looking at 46 million fatalities in order for herd immunity to start exerting some effect. And if we then assume that the mortality rate is not 1%, but 2%, then that number of fatalities goes up to 92 million. The second problem with hoping to achieve herd immunity through natural widespread infection is that the idea rests entirely on the assumption that a person, once infected, is permanently immune to the infection. And this is an assumption that we don't yet know to be true. In much the same way that a person who gets the common cold or the flu can get it again next year, we simply have no idea if an infection by SARS-CoV-2 will make a person permanently immune. And if they're not permanently immune, then the entire idea of trying to achieve herd immunity to protect us is a non-starter. The alternative to achieving herd immunity without risking mass death is an effective vaccine, but that is still a ways away. A vaccine will confer the benefits of immunity without risking death. 
It's important to understand, though, that again, we are making an assumption that a vaccine will confer permanent immunity, which is a critical piece to achieving herd immunity. This is not a given because, as you know, we have not yet been able to develop even a flu vaccine that gives us permanent immunity. Now, in my personal opinion, and this is just my gut feeling on the matter, so take it for what it's worth, a pathway to herd immunity isn't likely going to be the answer here. I think that the way out of this pandemic is to figure out how to kill the virus once it's infected the body, or at least prevent it from doing lethal amounts of damage. I believe in the power of human ingenuity to achieve remarkable things. And if an organized worldwide research hunt for a therapeutic is undertaken, it will be just a matter of time that an answer emerges.